Oh, man. I feel sick right now. The Packers are officially eliminated from the playoffs, just losing yet again to the San Francisco 49ers, 24-21, to in a game that every media head and analyst was saying the Packers were going to get blown out. It went to the very end versus the number one seed in their own stadium. And man, I'm, I'm very proud of this team. And although this hurts a lot right now because it's against the 49ers and because the history, at least in the last decade, of Packers versus 49ers in the playoffs, this one stings because we were so close. The Packers were so close to making the NFC Championship under their first year of Jordan Love, which is still insane to even you know be here talking about this right now. Back in October, no one would have guessed that we'd be even be in this position. So although this ju- this does hurt because any playoff loss hurts regardless, I don't want you guys to forget that the future is very bright here in Green Bay. What Jordan Love was able to accomplish this season with this offense, the bright future of this offense, this very young team overall, is is is, is very exciting for what the direction this team is going. And I know. A lot of people will place this loss on Jordan Love in the offense, which I get it. A lot of people will place this on the foot of Anders Carlson, which I get it, you know, but I'm not, I'm not sitting here and blaming Jordan Love and going, you know, if they had someone else, the Packers would have won because that's simply not the case. Jordan Love, you know, put his heart out on the line this season and and, then played phenomenally over the second half of the season. And this doesn't define how Jordan Love is for this team. This, this game won't define how Jordan Love plays in the future for this team. You know, if you can imagine back to the playoff game in 2009, Packers losing against the Cardinals in overtime, a heartbreaker. But that didn't define Aaron Rodgers. And this game won't define Jordan Love. It sucks, right? 100%, I feel it too. But the fact, like I said, that we're still here, we're still even here in this situation is just phenomenal. For the youngest team in the NFL to go and do this, and then put up a, a, a big fight against the number one seeded 49ers who have beat other teams around the league very easily. And to only lose by three here, it's impressive. And it makes me super excited for the future of this team. So I'm going to give my instant thoughts and reactions, kind of break them, some things down into this game. It still just feels so ugh, that now we're heading into the offseason. I, I love the offseason and, and I'm excited for 2024 and all that. But I still have to, like I guess, realize And understand what just happened. You know what I mean? I'm still processing that loss because, man, what a ride 2023 and 2024 was for this team. So, yeah, the Packers lost 24 to 21. And now we'll see who's going to represent the NFC, either the 49ers, Lions, or Buccaneers against whoever in the AFC for the Super Bowl. A lot of us didn't believe that the Packers could even make the Super Bowl, let alone the playoffs. So the fact that it came down to a couple plays in the NFC divisional round, I think is awesome, right? Uh, we'll start on the offense, and you know, the offense didn't play up to par as what we you know are used to seeing over the last two months at all. And this is against a very good San Fran defense, and I feel like they left a lot out on the field. You know, Jordan Love, twenty-one of thirty-four, two touchdowns, two picks, a seventy-two point four rating. Right? Jordan Love only had one interception um, in since like week twelve. It was against the Giants, and he gets two in this game with with two really bad throws across the middle. The one behind Tucker Craft, it gets tipped up. And then, of course, to end the game, when you still have two timeouts and 50 seconds, just throwing that ball across the middle is very Favre-esque. And we like to make these comparisons of Jordan Love, Darren Rodgers. And yeah, that was very Favre-esque. So it sucks, but he's a young quarterback. It's his first ever playoff run. You know, mistakes are going to happen. And I still back him fully, and he still is is my guy. Jordan Love 100% is my guy. The Packers need to sign him to a extension in May when they're allowed to, you know, re- re- revisit his contract and reload. The Packers have a ton of draft capital. They have some money to play around with. They have potential players returning like David Bakhtiari. You know, this future is exciting. And although Jordan Love didn't just have his best game, it happens, right? It happens. This offense overall uh, left a lot out in the field. Like I said, Aaron Jones, I think ran well, 18 for 108, five straight 100 yard games. And it just wasn't enough. I mean, He got that big run late in the fourth and set us up for a field goal that would have, you know, been a tie game right now. And maybe we're in overtime as I'm talking, but simply that didn't happen. And we'll we'll dive down into special teams as well, because it's just a joke at this point. As for receiving, man, Romeo Dobbs continued to impress in the playoffs. Like playoff Romeo Dobbs was amazing. He went four for 83. 
Outside of that, I'm kind of like underwhelmed by some of the other players. I feel like there just wasn't enough done. You know, Jaden Reed, four for 35. That's cool. Bo Melton, the one touchdown, excellent throw and catch. Uh, Luke Musgrave, three for 14. Watson, one for 11. Like this dude just, you know, I don't know. It's he kind of disappeared after getting hurt where it's like he, he kind of saw the season start to blow up again for Christian Watson. Then he hurts his hamstring and he gets one catch in the in his last two games of the season. Manuel Wilson caught a ball for 11. Tucker Craft, three for nine. Um, the 49ers defense, I got to give credit to them. And I do give credit to the Niners. I mean, they're flying around Fred Warner. You know, probably the best linebacker in the NFL. That guy's hard to beat. And this defense overall, they're physical. They tackle well. And that's just something the Packers didn't do either. They they did not tackle well. But I will say this, you know, the Packers defense, it played well. Like, it, it did play well. And at the end, yes, they didn't get a stop. But, man, they got plenty of stops in this game to make this game very winnable. And I will say on the on the offense, man, I'm super impressed again with the offensive line. Rasheed Walker going up against, you know, Chase Young and 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 holding his own. The interior guys, I thought they were blocking excellent. Like this run blocking early was absolutely phenomenal. Zach Tom left with concussion. Josh Nyman came in and struggled a little bit, but Jordan Love didn't get sacked one time. This offensive line has so much so much depth. It's so young. And it's a reason why Jordan Love is able to succeed. I, I'm very proud of the offensive line. I, I'm overall, like, you score 21 points, you needed 24. You needed more, right? And and as for the defense, you know, you held them to 24. That's that's not crazy great. But then again, the offense didn't do you too much help by, like, staying on the field too long in the second half. And the defense kept getting, you know, put back on the field. And they, they made their stops. They did make their stops. And at the end, yeah, 49ers went in and scored and, and went up by three. But... You know, I, I don't put this game on the defense. Now I'm still on board with finding a new defensive coordinator. I just feel like we just kind of need fresh blood there. And, and I and I commend Joe Barry for this late season turnaround and what he was able to do with his defense and, you know, stall the Cowboys offense and, you know, what he did in the final game against the Bears. And then even this game, I know 24 points, whatever. But I do commend him. But I, I just think the Packers need fresh blood personally. Um, you know, as for the defense, nothing on San Fran's offense made me go, wow, they, they deserve to win this game. Like Brock Purdy, like, like people think he should be MVP. I, I, I just don't see it. Like Jordan Love is a very clear, better quarterback in terms of, you know, skill. And I, and I know I'm probably going to get flamed by 49ers fans. Well, look at, look what happened. Jordan Love threw two, two interceptions and, and when it mattered, but Brock Purdy was missing throws all, all night as well. You know, 23 of 39, one touchdown. He got sacked once. The Packers needed to create more pressure, and they didn't. He had an 86.7 rating. Where, where you know, we got beat was on the ground, of course. Christian McCaffrey, I mean, to be expected, 17 of 98, two touchdowns. Still kind of holding him in check, I guess, somewhat. The Packers had an awful, you know, night tackling. There were so many extra yards gained by this 49ers team by missed tackles, constantly missed tackles. And at first, the defense was communicating great, but then later as the game went on and on, I feel like the communication wasn't there, and the 49ers were picking up yards with ease. As for receiving for the Niners, Debo Samuel checked out early with a shoulder injury, didn't return, so it was all George Kittle, you know, four for 81 and a touchdown. Uh, Juwan Jennings, of course, right, <laughs> five for 61 yards. Brandon Ayuk held him in check mainly, three for 32. Uh, McCaffrey, seven for, for 30. That's a good average for seven receptions, right? Only a 4.3 average. Debo did have two catches for 24 yards before going out. And of course, you have Chris Conley late in that game catching a 17-yard pass uh, on the sideline. It's like, damn, Chris Conley, really? Really? Ray Ray McLeod, one for seven. So, you know, the 49ers did what they needed to do and and got it done at the end, right? But man, it, it's just a, it's just a tough, it's a tough pill to swallow right now. And man, early on in this game, Darnell Savage dropping that interception just hurt so much like that might have been another pick six and the Packers probably win this game if that turns into a pick six the Packers then went down and um didn't score any points there I believe or they got only three or I think it was where they went for it and and I'll say this before I get into my next point of special teams um I'm not the one to sit here and and and, and blame refs but I feel like the refing was so inconsistent and off today I feel like they spotted the ball horribly so many times there were so many extracurricular things happening after plays like uh, I think Jaden Reed or was it Valentine pretty much? Yeah, it's Valentine getting blocked into the Gatorade bench and the refs just like allow that to happen. He's getting blocked completely out of bounds and thrown into a Gatorade bench. And, you know, I, I, I just didn't enjoy what was on display from these refs. And I know the Packers got some penalties as well, like some PIs, which were very clear PIs. So it's not like they shouldn't have happened. But, you know, you got that fourth down attempt on the, the love shove. And, you know, that spot was awful. It was absolutely awful. You know, that changed the game. And there's so many other instances where I just feel like the refs messed up, right? There's early in this game, the 49ers on defense were offsides, like in the neutral zone 
a ton. There was a play one of their nickel corners was literally offsides. Nick Bosa was offsides multiple times. And, I, and like I said, I'm not the person to sit here and blame the refs. The Packers lost this game. But man, it's just it's kind of just like, ugh. It, gives, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth after you see certain things like that happen and your team loses. Adding to some other great things I saw on defense, I thought Kenny Clark had one of his best games this year. I mean, that dude was flying around the field. Uh, Colby Wooden with a field goal block. I thought he had a good game. You know, there's a lot of brights to take out of this game. It's just, it hurts because it is a loss in the playoffs. And man, obviously, we, we got to talk about special teams. We got to talk about Anders Carlson. I Listen, during the year when everyone was coming after him and Matt LaFleur continued to back him up, I was kind of on the side of Matt LaFleur, you know, let this thing play out. I tend to be a patient fan. I was with with Jordan Love, right? He's a rookie kicker. Misses are going to happen. It happened with Mason Crosby, right? But man, I, I, I think that's changed now. Like into the playoffs. I mean, this guy misses a kick every game, whether it be a field goal or an extra point. And when it happens, when the stakes are this high and you have a chance at going to the NFC championship and you're missing a 41 yarder, man. Yeah, I think I think the Packers, uh, you know, need to find a new kicker. I I think I'm off the whole waiting for Anders at this point. And yes, this is fresh, so I'm a little you know recency biased here, and I'm gonna be angry at the missed kick. But it's not all on that. The offense, you know, didn't get it done in the end. They very well could have gone down and scored and won this game. They didn't get it done. It sucks because it should have been tied and maybe you go down and kick a field goal for the win, but that didn't happen either. So you can't really get too mad. It's not one thing that made the Packers lose this game. You know, there's not, there was some bad poor play on defense. There was some poor play on offense. There was a missed kick on, on special teams. You have, you have Keyshawn Nixon returning it all the way and fumbling. And thank God Eric Wilson was there for the save the day. Um, there was a lot, there's a lot of mistakes on all aspects of this team. And it was a team loss, right? Like, there's not one thing that I'm going to go, oh, that's because that's why the Packers lost. It was a team loss. But man, it just, it, it stinks. But, you know, like I said, don't forget that this future is so bright for this Packers team. I, I said it before Dallas, and I was like, no, no, you know, no matter what happens in the playoffs, the future is so bright. And no matter what happens, I'm excited for it. It just, it just hurts right now, of course. So... You know, I, I'm excited for 2024 and how the Packers are going to address certain things and and salary cap and free agency in the draft. And you'll find all that here right on the channel. We'll start breaking down the Packers salary cap here uh, probably this week or next week. We'll start doing our our weekly mock drafts. I know you guys love that series. Um, we'll dive down into free agency. We're going to dive down into everything, right? Off season, this is where you regroup, you rebuild, um, you know, build on to what you have. And go at it again. And I think the Packers are a favorite to be a playoff contender, a Super Bowl contender next year as well. And this is just the first year of this, guys. And then the fact that they overcame all this adversity and still got into the playoffs and still, you know, beat the Dallas Cowboys in the wild card, smoked them, and still had a very close game against the number one seeded 49ers. It's impressive. It's impressive. And I'm, I'm super, you know proud of this team. But that about does it for this video. Like I said, I appreciate you guys coming by. There'll be tons of Packers content still. It obviously doesn't end. So if you want to be a part of that, go down and click subscribe um, and join the channel. But that about does it for this one. I'll catch you all in the next one. And guys, remember, as always, go Pack Go.